Hi everybody, Susie Q here and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. In 10 steps, I'm going to take this closet, and this is my bedroom closet, from this to this. That's right, in 10 steps. In order to create a bioactive enclosure for my breeding crested geckos. So let's go check it out. So I'm going to try to create an enclosure that's really two separate enclosures with a divider that can come out for breeding and then put back in if they're not breeding. This enclosure, this is a front opening 36 by 18 by 24 high enclosure that I want for my crusty gecko. So I got this enclosure from my friend Tom. It already had cork bark back background in it, two separate ones, and this line in between gave me that amazing idea. But I don't want to just make it for one crested gecko, I want to make it for the male and the female crested gecko, because I would like to try to breed them. So I have to set up this enclosure very carefully. So I think I have some ideas, and worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, it's going to be in a, a bioactive enclosure for my female crested gecko. Trixie. This is Trixie. Can you see this? Sure, and if all goes well, it's going to be Trixie and Bixley's enclosure. I've already created, I'm going to blind you, this blinding light up here, but then I put a black shower curtain that I cut here. That blinding part you never see. If, I, if it's still too bright for me, I have this, because this is in the closet of my bedroom. So why don't you come along with and check this out. This could take a while. I might have to break it up into a couple different videos or not. Maybe I'll just make a super long one. But here we go. Here we get started. This is the beginning concept. Using this as the divider. And then from this part, I will cut down here and over. And that part will be removable. Everything else will remain the same. Okay, so, so far this is what I have. This is going to be in here and this is going to be a part of the structure. This is going to be, this piece is going to be able to go in and lock it into place somehow when I want them to be, or if we need them to be, two separate enclosures. Okay, so I'm going to do a dry fit with these wood to make sure that it fits. Okay, um, change of plans. My first challenge is I can't even move this empty. I don't know what makes me think I'm gonna be able to move it once I put things in it. So I'm gonna have to try to make this in the upright position, which is not ideal. It's just a, a challenge. I got this. I got this. I'm not giving up. Okay, removing the lid, the screen top. So this is great, great, great crack. <laughs> this is great crack. This is great stuff for gaps and cracks. And a little bit is going to expand, but it's going to hopefully hold things in place. But for me, since it's upright, everything would slide down. So I'm going to have to be prepared to, what am I going to hold it up with? What am I going to prop it up with? So I think I might use my wood pieces to prop it up. And when it's done, put my wood pieces in place. So I think I have to shake this up. I'm going to have to take a picture of it and zoom in just so I can read this. Oh my goodness. So I have the two side pieces propped up with very minimum amount of expand foam just to get it to set into place. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this upright, but I sure am going to try. 
I'm just going to add some little pieces of texture. We're good. I got this. I got this. Right now I'm just trying to make it not look like glass. So I don't really care where this stuff lands as long as it stays on the wall and not the ground. Okay, this is how I'm going to leave it for it to dry for a little bit. I'm going to leave it like this. I've got things propped up on the wall. It's not the most ideal situation. Ideally, you would want to lie it down and do it flat on a flat surface. would make it so much easier. I can only imagine what the, the next step is going to be like in the upright position, but I'm giving it my best shot. Well, this seems pretty dry. Everything seems pretty stable, so what I'm going to do is since this expandable foam is so shiny and smooth, I have to cut a small layer off of all of it so that the silicone will stick to it. So I got to say, I know this was the first time I've ever done anything like this, but this seemed to be the most counterproductive, silliest exercise I've ever done. It may turn out great. I'm keeping an open mind, but putting all this stuff on and then not having real nice tiny hands, taking almost all of it off again, just to expose the inside makes me think there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. But I'm going to clean this up and start with the silicone. Keep going. This has a lot of static cling, so it's clinging to a lot of things. I think I have another idea what I'm going to do for the next layer. I think I'm going to line this with a garbage bag and tape it to the side so everything that falls off I'll be able to reuse it again because otherwise I'll be wasting a lot having it trying to do this on end. So that's what I'm thinking. I'll go get the garbage bag and see how it works. Yeah, so I have this stuff. It's like opening a box of peanuts from a shipping thing. Oh. <laughs> They just kind of go everywhere. They have a mind of their own. Okay, that was a fail, because guess what? As I'm opening up this garbage bag, I thought I could just like tape it up against here and catch all the stuff and glue it back on the walls as soon as I open it. It smells real pretty. I'm not gonna use that. <laughs> I don't know what kind of deodorants they use. So I just figured out I'm gonna use Eco Earth for the walls because not only do I have a brick that I can use in the substrate, I also have it loose. But there's all different stuff. It's it's just stuff that I'm going to be gluing to the walls with the silicone. So since I have the most of this, and Eco with is loose coconut fiber. So see, I'm not sure if it's the same as this. Nope, this is coconut husk, and this is so this is coconut husk. It's the same as the, the other one. Definitely going to start wearing gloves and the silicone. It's a lot of work, but I'm thinking I'm liking it so far. I like the three-dimensional. Once I put the plants in right now, it's still drying. I got some clamps up there. Well, it's not drying. Just this, this part is drying, that my divider. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the false bottom. So because this is a, a tropical, it's going to be tropical, and I'm going to be misting it a couple times a day, I need the water to be able to drain through the plants and the soil down through into some area where it keeps the water away from the soil. All different kinds of bottoms you can use. You can use this um, light diffuser, the egg crate. You can cut this out and just have like one inch PVC pipes that hold it up, perfect. Um, you can use, there's so many different ways to use it. You can use, if you have old like psychedelic colored pink, hot pink gravel, uh, and you don't want to ever use it again in your tank, you can use it because you'll never see it. So you'll never see it. So that's good because you're going to have something in the front here so you won't see that and, and you'll have it covered with plants. So that's good. So do some research. Find out what's the best way for you to make your false bottom. The main reason why I use these clay pebbles and not the PVC, for me to, I don't have a piece of PVC lying around. And if I did, for me to cut it into five and five, equal sections would take me a lot longer and a lot harder than rinsing off some clay pellets. So I rinse off the clay pellets and now I'm ready for my screen mesh barrier. So let's get going. Where's my screen mesh barrier? This, I don't use any metals. There's no metals. I got this at Home Depot. 
This is not, oh, I've been making these for years and I'm an expert. Now, Serpa Design, no, he's amazing. He's got some skills. And he, he's got an amazing channel and he walks you through it. So now I'm gonna, the weird thing about this is normally my hardscape is always above. Well, because these pieces of wood were a little too long and I did not want to cut them off at the nodule. So right now I'm gonna build this around it and then get ready for my substrate. I am really excited. So what do you think so far? This is the back wall that's gonna keep them separated. There's gonna be a door between here. I'm hoping this works out. Now keep in mind, it's just a concept. <laughs> you guys know better. Leave it in the comment below and let me know. Measure this. I'm not really gonna measure it. I'm really bad like that. I just wanna make sure this covers the bottom and comes up at least two inches because I'm gonna probably want two inch substrate. I'm gonna want some kind of depth to my substrate. I feel like I want to keep saying, this is not a how-to, this is how I do. <laughs> and as I push down the screen, it levels itself off. I'm not too worried about the leveling. Can you see that? I just put the screen down on top, wrapped it around the tree, getting ready for the substrate. I've had some other terrariums that were very high, high humid, high humidity that I put a drain pipe in so that I could siphon out if the water got too much. I'm not going to do that this time because I'm thinking worst case scenario gets too much. I can always pull back the plant in the corner and pull it. Out. I'm not too worried about that. I do want to get another layer of a uh, screen down. Let me get that. I want to make sure I come up about three inches. Well, it's more like two inches. I, I want the nice deep substrate for this one. Plus there's a good chance she's going to use this as her lay box too. So I want to make sure. Let's go make the substrate. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this, but my sphagnum is sitting in a bucket and I just put dechlorinated water in it. Um, and it's sitting in there and it's gonna start absorbing this water. It's gonna act like a sponge. I'm just gonna sit it in there and let it do its thing. And then I'll add it after it's absorbed the water. For the substrate, do your research. My very first terrarium, I got um, substrate from Josh's Frogs. My next terrarium, a premix for um, Tropical Tank. My next one I got from the Bio Dude. Then I started watching Serpent Design. He has his own recipe. Um, and then I just kept watching a lot of different people create their own substrate to the point where I'm just going to make the substrate out of the different stuff I have. So I don't want you to follow my recipe. I would rather you do research and do your recipe. But I am using the sphagnum moss, the husks, reptosoil, leaf litter. Well, we'll get to leaf litter later. It's not like a recipe I want anybody else to follow. I want you to do your own research because I don't want to be responsible for telling you the wrong thing. Uh, first couple ones, I follow the directions. The second one, I followed the directions and used somebody else's. Now I'm just winging it. I'm going to wing it in this bucket. Let me go get the bucket. Jungle mix from Zilla. Eco Earth. Fur bark. This is the fur bark. Sphagnum, a little bit of peat. I got some more sphagnum over there, Eco Earth. I have a whole culture of springtails. I'm actually going to use that activated carbon on the bottom layer of this as well. So I'll show you that when I get that. So that, that is the, um, the jungle mix. It's very, very dry. So I'm going to get some water and not get it drenched, but keep it workable. Going to add a little bit of sphagnum. So I got these like palm husks from the Bio Dude. And they break down a lot slower than some of the other stuff, which is awesome. So I'm going to put this on top as well. So I'm basically putting down a very thin layer of substrate just to hold the screen in place to make sure all the corners are good before I go add in charcoal and everything else. So the screen looks good on this side. Now I'm going to get this side. I'm a very thin layer in just to make sure that all the corners are tucked in the right way. Then I'm going to add the charcoal. And what I did is I poured extra water in there and poured out my ice, my isopods. I mean my springtails. Can you see that? So they're going to go in in a little bit. But first I'm going to get the charcoal in. Um, because I was using it for the isopods and the springtail cultures. So this is a really good next layer to use. 
get this in here. So now I'm going to add some of these, but they're way big. So what I do is I cut them. I just cut them up to the parts and mixes, and I mix them in. This gives aeration. It gives them good things to chomp on. I'm just gonna put a handful of. And I'm gonna put a handful of these in here, but I'm, these are the ones that I'm gonna mix in. These are not the ones that go on top because I didn't plant anything yet. And I'm putting some isopot, uh, some springtails in with some more charcoal. See how I kind of sandwich it? I'm just sandwiching it. So I got all that charcoal. Springtails, isopods. Okay, since I don't have any isopods, I can't add my isopods. So what I'm going to do, I did add a, a, a small amount of springtails. Um, but that's okay because now I'm going to plant the plants. I'm going to plant the plants. Almost there, man. This is a huge project, but I'm thrilled with how it's turning out so far. And I cannot wait to start putting plants in. So trying to decorate and think in my head with plants, I'm thinking I should put the biggest plants in first. So what I'm going to start doing is pulling out the plants, taking off as much dirt as I can, rinsing off the roots and putting it in here. So let's get started with the uh, plants. I think two of my tallest plants are these Sansevera mother-in-laws. I'm hoping that they fit. So I'm going to probably put them off into the corner. They're very slow growers. But I'm going to rinse them off. And I'm going to start adding them, but I got to put something on the ground because I'm getting dirt everywhere already. <laughs> gotta say it came out better than I I thought it would have and I don't know but I absolutely like the background now so I'm just gonna spray it a little bit to make sure all this moss gets a little head start takes hold I'm gonna put on some grow lights because I really want these roots to take hold before I put any animals in here So I'm really liking it. I'm going to get some close-ups, you know, once I get some of the dirt off of everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I put some dead moss up there, but that's okay. It still gives texture. Okay, so now that I got everything nice and wet, so it looks amazing, like right after a little rainstorm, I'm going to bring you in close and see how this looks. All the way in the back, up top, we got some moss. We got some moss over here. We got Dracania. We got a Sansevieria back there. The guy told me this is another kind of Sansevieria, but when I went to pull it out, they weren't really rooted, so I don't know if they'll take, but... And then we got a little palm. I forget the name of this, but it's growing really good in my other terrarium. Some Boston fern, bromelade, bromelade, bromeliad. I know the name of this one. But you see how I tried to make it look the same? So when the wall's up, it almost looks like it's the same. I got this moss from that breeder at the Repticon. Man, I love that table. And this will hopefully grow up this tree trunk along with this. And the other side is almost the same. Oh, 
Oh man, I really like the way it came out. I think Dixie and Bixley will be very happy. Maybe not together, <laughs> but I'm prepared for it if it needs to be separate. I really like it. Okay, so that was worth it. Now let's get the leaf litter on there. So now if you remember, or I should say if you stuck with me this long, <laughs> thanks. But this is the longest video I have ever, ever done. And it's also probably close to the biggest project I ever did. So I didn't want to break it up into a series. But I did mix some leaf litter down in the bottom and I got some palm leaves mixed in. But I'm going to put some of these on top, basically so that my isopods have a place to hide. Give them a little shelter, and as I water it, it'll break down really as nice food for them. I'm just going to be putting a couple in. So at the, And I'm going to let these uh, plants take hold. And I'm going to go to the next reptile show and get some isopods. And I'll probably get a lot more springtails because what I used in here was the last of my culture. Not that I needed a, re a reason to go to the next reptile show, but it, it will be for a good cause. So if you're still here, kudos, man. As I know this was a long one. It was one of my biggest projects. So I really appreciate you guys staying to the end. Well, thanks for coming along and checking out this 10 steps to a bioactive townhouse for my breeding crusty geckos. Thanks, guys, and I will see you next time.